Hi and good morning everyone. This is Dr. Bernard Ebenezer Cyrus, Assistant Professor, Faculty of Physiotherapy. Today's topic is manual muscle testing. This is a tool or an instrument to measure the power of a particular muscle. The muscle power has to be checked in various stages in the prognosis of a patient. A patient for whom where to diagnose if the patient is improving or not or how to improve, where to improve and what are the exercises to prescribe all depends on the power of the muscle. So the muscle has to be graded with certain uh, criteria. So this particular manual muscle testing is a test to grade the power of a muscle. We call it as manual muscle testing. There are five grades in manual muscle testing. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So probably 0 we call it as no contraction where we see no visible contraction that is evident and along the course of that particular muscle. 1 is flicker of contraction. Flicker means a twitch of a particular muscle in that particular uh, uh, muscular area when the patient attempts a movement. That is flicker of contraction. And 2 is a uh, full range of motion in elimination of gravity where the patient if asked to move that particular uh, joint the patient can move the joint in full range pro provided in a position that is in elimination of gravity where the gravity doesn't play any role towards that particular moment. Mm -hmm. Muscle power 3 is full range of motion against gravity. So a particular movement is done against gravity but in full range that is called as muscle power 3. Muscle power 4 is the same like muscle power 3, full range of motion against gravity uh, but probably with a mild resistance added to that particular movement. So that is uh, muscle power 4 and muscle power 5 is full range of motion against gravity with maximal resistance that is offered to when performing that particular movement. These are the 5 gradings of manual muscle testing. So, uh, in fact, in this uh, session, we would see different uh, movements which are involved and the positions that are involved to check that particular manual muscle testing. Yes, so we will go in sequence from uh, the upper limb and then the lower limb. So, initially, to begin with, with the upper limb, it is the first joint that we see is shoulders. So, today, um, the model to help us is Ashok who will be helping us towards the explanation of this particular uh, manual muscle testing. The first thing is shoulder. So shoulder, the first movement to do in shoulder is shoulder flexion. Shoulder flexion, this is shoulder flexion, yes. This is full range of motion, shoulder flexion, full range of movement uh, that is being done. So now when we are uh, going to see step by step each uh, gradings of this muscle, zero is no contraction. So the shoulder flexors, so this is, this happens to be the shoulder flexors here and there won't be any visible contraction when the patient is asked to move this particular segment. But when the patient is asked to move this particular segment and if there is a twitch of a particular muscle in the shoulder flexor region, then we call it as uh, muscle power 1 or flicker of contraction. Muscle power 2, muscle power 2 is full range of motion in elimination of gravity. So the position to choose is very very important. So what position we choose is important. So when uh, for uh, flexion, the position that we choose is side lying position. So this is side lying position and the patient is asked to do the full range of motion. And if the patient do that movement, Yes, if the patient is able to do this full range of motion, yes, then this is muscle power 2. This is elimination of gravity where the movement is done horizontal to the ground, eliminating the gravity. So this is muscle power 2. For muscle power 3, this should be done against gravity. So we would ask the patient to stand and ask him to do the full range of motion against gravity. Yes. Yes, if the patient is able to do, probably hand should be like this, yes. If the patient is able to do this full range of motion, then this is called muscle power 3. Because this uh, movement is against gravity, gravity, uh, gravity is towards the ground and we are doing a movement that is perpendicular to the ground. So this is against gravity, this is muscle power 3. Muscle power 4, the same movement, adding on a slight resistance. And if the patient is asked to do the movement, yes, do the movement. And if he is able to do the movement with this resistance, with this resistance, then this is called muscle power 4. So this, we offer minimal resistance, so uh, this is muscle power 4. 
maximal resistance. So muscle power 5 offering a maximal resistance. Now the patient is asked to do the same movement. Yes, and if the patient is able to do the full range of motion, yes, then this is called full range of motion against gravity with maximal resistance. This is muscle power 5. So these are the 5 grades for this particular movement, shoulder flexion. Now uh, looking into shoulder extension. So shoulder extension, the movement shoulder extension is, this is shoulder extension. So ask the patient to do the movement, yes. This is shoulder extension. So shoulder extension, while looking on to the five grades, we would, uh, for grade zero, we, uh, when patient is asked to move, he would not be able, uh, be able to do that movement. So that is grade zero, no contraction. Flicker of contraction, here for extension, shoulder extension, the flicker can be visible in the posterior segment of the shoulder, where when the patient is asked to move, there will be a flicker of a particular muscle here on the posterior aspect. We call it the shoulder extensors. So if there is a flicker, then that is uh, grade 1. For grade 2, again we ask the patient to lie down side lying and ask the patient to extend his shoulder. And if he is able to extend the shoulder to the fullest movement, full range, then it is called muscle power 2, where the movement is done horizontal to the ground and uh, eliminating the gravity. So, so, this is muscle power 2. Yes, you can stand. For muscle power 3, that it is full range of motion against gravity. So, we ask the patient to do full range of motion against gravity in standing position. Yes, do the movement. Yes, this is muscle power 3. Now, slowly from uh, grade 4, we would add a mild resistance and ask the patient to do the movement. Yes, do. And if he is able to do the movement with the resistance, with the mild resistance, this is muscle power 4. And if the patient has offered maximal resistance and if the patient is asked to move the movement and if he is able to do the full range of do the movement, yes. If he is able to do the full range of movement with maximal resistance, this is called muscle power 5. So this is with regarding to extension of shoulders. Now we would uh, go to the next movement called abductors, shoulder abduction. So shoulder abduction, the movement is, ask the patient to abduct, so the movement is, this is full range of motion called as shoulder abduction. We call it as shoulder abduction. So shoulder abductors, uh, uh, grade zero. So usually the uh, muscle to palpate or look at is, the muscle of the lateral aspect. So these are called shoulder abductors. When the patient is asked to move, abduct the uh, shoulder and if he is not able to do, then that is grade zero. If there is a flicker uh, in the lateral aspect of the shoulder, then we call it as uh, muscle power one. So for muscle power two, so muscle power two is uh, an elimination of gravity. Positioning is very important uh, when checking on the grades for the manual muscle testing. So we ask the patient to lie supine lying and ask the patient to do the full range of motion. Yes. So if he is able to do the full range of motion, this is done horizontal to the ground, eliminating the gravity. This is muscle power 2 when he is able to do the range in full, full range. Do the movement. Yes. If he is able to do the full range movement, then it is called muzzle power 2. Now you can stand. If the patient is asked to make this, made to stand and asked to do the movement, now do the movement. Yes, this is full range of motion against gravity, perpendicular to the ground. This is muscle power three, full range of motion against gravity. Now the same movement, if it is done with mild resistance. Now, you, if you can do the movement, yes, by doing the movement. If the patient is able to do the full range of motion with mild resistance, then we call it as muscle power four. For muscle power 5, we would offer maximum resistance and ask the patient to do the movement. And if the patient is able to do the movement with maximal resistance, then it is muscle power 5. So this is with shoulder abduction. The next muscle to see is shoulder adduction. So shoulder adduction uh, is ask the patient to abduct the shoulder and ask the, pa uh, abduct and ask the patient to bring it closer to his body. This is adduction from away closer to the body this is adduction so where do we see the adductors adductors are found in the inner aspect okay in the medial aspect of the arm or the shoulder upper proximal aspect of the shoulder so the, when we ask the patient to adduct and if there is no movement happening 
or keep the uh, arms a little wider in the abducted position, ask the patient to adduct, then it is called, uh, then this is called adduction. When we ask to adduct and the patient is not able to do, then the muscle power is zero. When it is abducted and the patient, when you can feel a twitch of the muscle here in the inner aspect, in the proximal part of the uh, shoulder, then that is called flicker of contraction, muscle power one. When again for muscle part 2, you will have to choose an anti-gravity position or elimination of gravity position. So, we would ask the patient to lie down supine lying, and keep the arm in the abducted position and ask the patient to adduct the uh, arm. In. And as he does this uh, movement in full range, this is called full range of motion, uh, again in elimination of gravity position. The movement is done horizontal to the ground, eliminating the gravity. Now for the grade 3, ask the patient to stand. So grade 3 is a little uh, complicated uh, um, activity. Probably we will have to see how he can do this movement in the against gravity position. So against gravity is a very important uh, protocol where we ask the patient to lie down side lying to on the edge of the couch. Now if the patient is asked to adduct and if he is able to do this movement, okay, this is adduction against gravity. If the movement is done in full range, then this is called adductus um, grade 3, which is full range of motion uh, against gravity. And if it is offered with mild resistance, yes, you can stand, then it is called muscle power 4. And if it is done with maximal resistance, it is called muscle power 5. So, these are the positioning of various uh, uh, actions in and around the shoulders. The next group of uh, uh, movements that we are going to see is elbow flexors and elbow extensors. Both, both of the muscles are on the uh, opposite compartments, elbow flexors on the uh, anterior compartment, elbow extensors on the posterior compartment. So, uh, we would uh, uh, now go in to see the uh, steps as to check what are the positions for the various gradings for muscle power zero. So, when the patient is asked to flex his elbow, okay, the uh, part where we, it is visible elbow flexion is mainly because of the anterior muscles of the arm. So, when the patient is asked to flex, there is no movement, then that is muscle power zero. If there is movement and if there is slight flicker around the anterior part of the arm, then that is called flicker of contraction. If the, move, if the patient is asked to do a movement and if the uh, patient is uh, able to do the movement, yeah, do the movement, yes, supported on a um, uh, table and if he is able to do the full range of motion, yes, do the movement, yes, full range of motion in the horizontal aspect, um, eliminating the gravity, then this is called muscle power 2. So, full range of motion in elimination of gravity. Then muscle power 3, full range of motion against gravity. Yes, do the movement. Yes, this is full range of motion against gravity, where the patient I fast to do can do the full range of motion, okay, perpendicular to the ground. Now, for grade 4, we would offer mild resistance and ask the patient to do the full range of motion. Yes. Yes, if he is able to do, then this is muscle power 4. For muscle power 5, we would offer maximal resistance and ask the patient to uh, do the movement. Yes? Yes, this is muscle power 5. So, these are for uh, elbow flexors. The next uh, movement that we are going to see is elbow extensors. So, elbow extensors, the muscles for elbow extension are present in the posterior aspect of the arm. So, elbow extension, this is elbow extension this is elbow extension. So, when a patient is asked to move and when there is no movement that is happening then that is muscle power zero. When there is slight flicker of movement in the posterior compartment of the arm then that is called uh, flicker of contraction muscle power one. For muscle power two same uh, like the flexors to the side. Yes, if it is supported in the horizontal position and if the patient is able to do the full range of motion this is full range of motion again do yes full range of motion in the horizontal gravity eliminated position this is muscle power 2 for um, elbow extensors for elbow extensors muscle power 3 the position is slightly different so we would ask the patient to raise his uh, arms like this and then do this movement okay so then we would ask to extend 
the elbows. Yes. So when we, the patient is able to do this movement against gravity, perpendicular to the ground in full range, this is called muzzle power 3. Offering a mild resistance, okay, minimal resistance and may ask the patient to do the full range of motion and if he is able to do the full range of motion, this is muzzle power 4. And if maximum resistance is offered and the patient is asked to do the full range, yes, and if the patient is able to do the full range of motion, this is called muzzle power 5. So, these are the gradings of the movements that happens in and around the elbows. So, the next movement that we are going to see is for the wrist. So, wrist we would see wrist flexion. So, this is wrist flexion. Yes, do the Yes, this is wrist flexion. So, uh, for wrist flexion, the muscle that we observe is the anterior aspect of the forearm. So, th this is the place where we would uh, look for the uh, wrist flexions. So, if the patient is asked to the movement, do the movement and if the patient is not able to do the movement, then that is called muscle power zero. If the patient is not, when trying to attempt the movement, but there is a flicker that is seen in the anterior aspect of the forearm, that we call it as flicker of contraction or muscle power one or muscle grading one. So, for muscle power two, the movement is done in elimination of gravity, okay, uh, parallel to the ground, horizontal. So, now do the movement. Yes, if the patient is able to do the movement in full range, uh, horizontal to the ground, eliminating the gravity, this is called muzzle power 2. For muzzle power 3, the patient is asked to, in standing position, the patient is asked to flex the wrist and if he is able to flex the wrist, this is called muzzle power 3, which is full range of motion against gravity, perpendicular to the ground. And as he does this movement, offering a minimal resistance and ask the patient to flex the wrist, yes. And when he flex, this is called muzzle power 4 with minimal resistance. And for maximal resistance, we offer yes and ask the patient to do the full range of motion. And if the patient is able to do it in full range, then we call it as muzzle power 5. So, this is for uh, wrist flexors. So, wrist extension, okay, just yeah, keep the hand like this and do this movement. Yes, this is called wrist extension. So, for wrist extension, uh, muzzle power, the muzzle where we have to see is the uh, posterior aspect of the forearm. So, when we ask the patient to extend this wrist and the patient is not able to do, then we call it as zero, muzzle power zero, no contraction. When the patient attempts to do a movement and if there is a flicker in the posterior aspect of the forearm, then that is called muzzle power one. If the patient is positioned in such a way and if the patient is extending the wrist, extend the wrist. Yes, extend the wrist horizontal to the ground, parallel to the ground, eliminating the gravity, then this is called muzzle power 2, doing it in full range. If the patient is asked to extend, extend the wrist, yes, extend the wrist against gravity in full range, then this is called muzzle power 3. If the patient is offered with minimal resistance and asked to move, yes, and if he is able to do the full range of motion, this is with minimal resistance, this is called muzzle power 4. And if maximum uh, resistance is offered and the patient is asked to move, yes. And if the patient is able to do the movement in full range, then we call it as muzzle power 5. So, this is for wrist extension. Now, there is a uh, movement, we call it as uh, pronation and supination. Pronation, supination, there is always a con confusion for students. So, there is a famous quote that uh, can determine the uh, movements. Kings pronate and beggars supinate. So, kings pronate. So, kings give arms to the uh, poor people. So, kings pronate. So, any movement that uh, is done with uh, action of kings uh, that pronate is called pronation. And beggars supinate. Beggars are people who ask for arms. So, any movement that faces the palm upwards is called supination. So, this is the uh, way to classify pronation and supination. So, first we will look into pronation. So, pronation is a movement where the movement is done in um, uh, uh, the along the shaft of the particular muscle. To determine the pronators, okay, pronators is a little difficult as we see the forearm. The pronators are present in the mid of the forearm. So, when the patient is asked to pronate and the patient is not able to do, then this is called muscle power zero. When the patient is asked to pronate and uh, if the patient attempts and if there is a flicker in the central part of the forearm, then we call it as muscle power one. 
if the patient is asked to do the movement in eliminated of gravity movement. So eliminated of gravity movement should be, the movement should be horizontal to the ground. Give a pen or, or a stick to the patient and ask the patient to do this movement. And if he's able to do this movement, yes, yes. If he's able to do this movement, okay, uh, this position is horizontal to the ground. So this is elimination of gravity, muzzle power two. Muzzle part two, this elimination of, uh, of gravity, the uh, axis of movement is here, uh, the pen is kept in between to check if the movement is done parallel to the ground. For muzzle power uh, three, which is done against gravity, so uh, the patient is asked to keep his hand like this and then to do like this. Okay, so yes, so patient asked to pronate, yes. So pronate, yes, full range of movement when done, this is called pronate, uh, pronation, this is muzzle power uh, uh, 3, which is done against gravity. If minimal uh, resistance is offered and if the patient is asked to move, this is called muzzle power 4. And if maximal resistance is offered, this is called muzzle power 5, if the uh, range is done in full range. For supination, okay, king's pronate, beggar's supinate, this is called supination. So if the movement is done this way, this is called supination. So supination, when uh, the patient is asked to do the movement and if he is not able to do that, that is called muscle pass zero. If the patient is asked to sup uh, supinate and if this particular region, okay, the proximal part of the forearm uh, is uh, fl flickers or contracts, then that is called flicker of contraction muscle power one. For uh, muzzle part two, we would give a pen or a stick in between and ask to do the movement. So the movement happens, yes, the movement happens pa parallel to the ground. This is done in elimination of gravity. This is done in full range, so it is called muzzle part two. For um, um, determining muzzle part three, the patient is asked to supinate and if the patient is able to su supinate in full range, this is called muzzle power three. This is full range of motion against gravity. And for the same movement, if a mild resistance is offered and the patient is asked to do the movement, yes. And as he does the movement, if he is able to do it in full range, this is called muzzle power 4. And if it is done with maximum resistance and if the patient is asked to move and if the patient does it in full range, this is called muzzle power 5. So these are the basic, uh, 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 basic positioning of the upper limb. There are another two... Uh, movements that are let out which is called the radial deviation and ulnar deviation. So the radial deviation, so radial deviation the lateral aspect this is called the uh, radius is present here, the ulna is present here. If the wrist moves towards okay or inclines towards the radius this is called radial deviation. If the wrist moves towards the ulnar so this is called ulnar deviation. So radius and radial deviation and ulnar deviation. So the muscle power, so zero, okay, zero is no contraction when the patient is asked either to do the radial deviation or to do the ulnar deviation. If the patient is not able to do, we call it as muscle power zero. If the patient is able, asked to radially deviate, okay, do the radial deviation and if there is a flicker of contraction happening on the lateral aspect lateral aspect of the forearm then we call it as flicker of contraction muscle power one okay muscle power two uh, if the patient is asked uh, to uh, do the radial deviation and if the movement is done in full range so this movement is done horizontal to the ground parallel and this is done with the elimination of gravity and if it is done in full range this is called muscle power two and for muzzle part 3, keep the hand in uh, mid prone position and ask the patient to do radial deviation. So if the patient is able to do the radial deviation in mid prone position, this is full range of motion happening against gravity. So this is muzzle part 3. If the same movement is done with minimal resistance, yes. Yes, this is muzzle part 4 with minimal resistance. With maximal resistance, yes. Uh, this is muzzle part 5. So this is for radial deviation. 
the same thing with ulnar deviation the ulnar deviation we could see the uh, movement uh, in the inner aspect of the forearm or the medial aspect of the forearm so when the patient is asked to do uh, ulnar deviate and if he is not able to do that is muscle pass zero if the patient is asked to move and if there is a flicker that happens in the medial aspect of the forearm then we call it as flicker of contraction or muscle pass one if the patient is asked to do the movement in eliminated gravity position yes this is the position that we do this is horizontal to the ground parallel to the ground and elimination of gravity this is muscle power 2 for muscle power 3 the patient is had it in this position and asked to ulnar deviate so if he is able to do it in full uh, full range we call it as yes do muscle power 3 if it is done full range against gravity if there is mild resistance offered and the patient is asked to do the movement yes and if he is able to do then we call it as muscle power 4 and if we offer maximal resistance and make the ask the patient to do the movement yes and if he is able to do this is muscle power 5 this is for ulnar deviation so these are the key movements in the upper limb and how to grade this uh, uh, these movements uh, via uh, manual muscle testing and now we have come to the second session of manual muscle testing for the lower limbs for low limbs we we'll have to concentrate on three regions the hip knee and the foot the first thing we go is for the hip there are four important movement that can happen in and around the uh, hip the first movement is hip flexion yes do the hip flexion yes this is hip flexion so hip flexion usually the muscle happens to be uh, inserted in the anterior aspect of the thigh in the proximal region if the patient is asked to move and if he is not able to do the movement then that is called muscle pass zero where uh, it is called no contraction if the patient attempts to do a movement and if there is some flicker that happens in the anterior aspect of the thigh in the proximal part then that is called flicker of contraction muscle pass one for muscle pass two we would ask the patient to lie sideways facing that side so and ask the patient to do the movement yes do the movement yes so this movement is done horizontal parallel to the ground we call it as elimination of gravity so this is muscle power to a full range of motion happening in the uh, elimination of gravity position now to check muscle power 3 so the patient is asked to lie down in supine position and asked to do the movement yes do the movement yes yeah. yes if the patient is able to do the full range of motion against gravity okay in the per- perpendicular to the ground this is called muscle power 3 for the same movement if the patient is offered yes a minimal resistance and if the patient is asked to do, do the movement yes do the movement yes and if the patient is able to do the full range of motion this is called muscle power 4 and if we offer maximal resistance yes and if the patient is asked to move and still the mo- patient is able to do the movement in full range this is called muscle power 5 so this is for uh, hip flexion for hip extension lie down in prone position now do the hip extension yes this is called hip extension so hip extension happens okay in prone lying position so this is hip extension so the muscle to be checked for hip extension is in the glute okay glute region in the proximal part so if the patient is asked to do the movement and if the patient is not able to do then that is called muscle pass zero which is no contraction if the patient attempts to do a movement and if there is some flicker or contraction happening in the glute muscle then we call it as muscle power 1 or flicker of contraction if the patient is asked to do the movement yes turn sideways face this side yes and if the patient is asked uh, may to lie down sideways and if the patient is asked to do extension yes and if the pa- patient is able to do the movement in full range this is called muscle power 2 this is horizontal to the ground parallel to the ground in elimination of gravity position muscle power 2 done in full range now lying down in the prone position if the patient is asked to do uh, the uh, um, uh, extension yes and if it is done in full range this is called muscle power 3 perpendicular to the ground in full range this is called muscle power 3 so against gravity now offering a mild resistance or minimal resistance and ask the patient to do the movement yes and if he is able to do the movement in full range this is called muscle power 4 and offering maximal resistance and ask the patient to do the movement yes and if he is able to do the movement this is called muscle power 5 so this is with regarding to uh, hip extension the next movement that we are going to see is hip abduction like uh, supine supine position 
yes now do this movement just bring your leg out yes this is abduction this we call it as hip abduction so for muscle the uh, region where we have to look uh, is on the lateral aspect of the upper part of thigh so lateral aspect of upper part of thigh is the region where we have to look out for hip abductors so if the patient is asked to move, abduct the hip and if he is not able to do then that is muscle pass zero uh, no contraction if the patient attempts to do the movement and if there is some flicker happening on the lateral aspect of the uh, thigh then that is called proximal thigh then that is called as a flicker of contraction or muscle power one if the patient for muscle power two elimination of gravity position if the patient uh, patient is lie down in the supine position and is asked to do the movement in full range if uh, yeah do the movement in full range yes now the movement happens parallel to the ground okay horizontal and this is in elimination of gravity so this is called muscle power two full range of motion in elimination of gravity position now for muscle power three on that side yes now the patient is asked to do the movement yes the abduction nalo thukka kala yes yes now if the patient is asked to do um, abduct yes do do yes if he is able to do this movement full range against gravity this is called muscle power 3 for the same movement if a minimal resistance is offered yes lift your leg yes if a minimal resistance is offered and if he is able to do it in full range this is called muscle power 4 if maximum resistance is offered yes you can do and if he is able to do the full range of motion against gravity this is called muscle power 5 so this is in regard with a hip abduction so point supine range of motion now next muscle we going to see is hip adduction so for hip adduction we would have to keep the limb in abducted position and ask the patient to adduct so adduct so this is hip adduction so for hip adduction the muscles that we going to focus is on the inner aspect or the medial aspect of the thigh so when asked to adduct keep the leg in the abducted position and when the patient is asked to adduct if he is not able to do hey if he is not able to do then that is called muscle pass zero no contraction if the patient attempts to do a movement and if there is some contraction happening in the inner or medial aspect of thigh then that is called uh, muscle power one which is flicker of contraction if the patient for uh, checking the muscle power two the gravity eliminated position horizontal to the ground supine lying position is opted and the patient is asked to do the movement and if the patient is able to do the full range of motion uh, parallel to the ground okay this is called muscle power two which is an elimination of gravity position now for this uh, patient if we want to check for muscle power 3 the position is a little interesting just turn this side yes he has to do a movement which is against gravity probably we will have to lift the other limb lift the other uh, extremity and hold it in place now ask the patient to adduct kaltuku yes this movement is against gravity so this is just do the movement full range of movement against gravity this is muscle power 3 so if the patient is offered with mild resistance and asked to move the leg yes move and if he is able to do it in full range then this is called muscle power 4 offering minimal resistance and if maximal resistance is offered yes do and if the patient still can do the movement in full range this is muscle power 5 next muscle that we going to see is knee extension and knee flexion so uh, the next movement that we see is knee flexion so knee okay ask the patient to flex the knee okay and touch the heel to the butt yes try this is knee flexion so knee flexion with uh, the muscle uh, to be seen is in the posterior aspect of the thigh posterior after aspect of the thigh probably the mid one third and the lower one third of thigh is the point of uh, reference to be observed so when asked the uh, patient is asked to flex the knee and if he is not able to do then that is muscle pass zero not able to do that particular movement no contraction is seen if the patient attempts to flex okay attempts to flex you, you can check this in the uh, prone lying position if the patient is asked to flex the knee and if he is not able to and while he attempts to do the flexion if there is some contraction he seen in the distal part of the thigh in the posterior aspects then that is called flicker of contraction we are uh, or muscle power 1 if the patient is asked to uh, remain in side lying yes. patient is asked to do the movement yes flex 
flexion e yes this happens in the horizontal to the ground okay parallel to the ground so it is elimination of gravity position so if the patient is able to do this movement in full range we call it as muzzle part 2 and if the patient is asked to flex the knee this is full range of motion against gravity so probably this position may not be appropriate because still 90 degrees is against gravity then it will be towards gravity so probably for checking the muzzle part 3 the position the correct position to check will be in standing position ask the patient to flex the knee yes so full range of motion against gravity perpendicular to the ground uh, is muzzle part 3 offering a mild resistance and ask the patient to do yes Yes, 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 yes. And if he's able to do it in full range, then this is called muscle power 4, offering maximum resistance. Yes. Now, ask the patient to do the movement. Yes, 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 yes. Good. If the patient is able to do it in full range, this is called muscle power 5. This is for knee flexion. The next muscle that we see is knee extension. This is knee extension. So, probably to check the knee extension, yeah, the area to be observed is the anterior aspect of the mid and the distal thigh. So this is the quadriceps is the muscle that is involved in knee extension. So this part is anterior aspect of thigh is the part to be observed when performing this movement. If the patient is asked to extend the knee and if he is not able to do the knee extension then that is muscle pass zero that is uh, no contraction. If the patient attempts to extend the knee but there is a visible contraction seen in the anterior part of thigh. So then that is called as muzzle power 1 or flicker of contraction. For muzzle power 2, lie down sideways. Ask the patient to extend the knee. Extend? Extend. Yes. Extend the knee. Yes. This movement is done horizontal, parallel to the ground. So eliminator of gravity position. So full range of motion. Yes. Do. So full range of motion in eliminated gravity position, this is muscle part 2 for knee extension. So make the patient seated, okay, then now ask the patient to do the full range of motion of knee extension. Yes, do. So this is full range of motion against gravity. So full range of motion against gravity, this is called muscle part 3. For the same movement, if a minimal resistance is offered and the patient is asked to do the full range of motion and if he is able to do the movement, then this is called muscle part 4, minimal resistance. And if offering maximal resistance, yes, do, 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 and still the patient can do extend this movement, then this is called muscle power 5. So this is knee extension and its grading. The next uh, muscle that we see is for the foot. So this is dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. So dorsiflexion and plantar flexion are the uh, movement of the foot. So dorsiflexion is toe looking upwards, yes, this is dorsiflexors. So dorsiflexors, when the, uh, the muscles to be observed is the anterolateral aspect, anterolateral aspect of the uh, leg that is to be observed. When the patient is asked to dorsiflex and if he is not able to do then that, that is muscle power zero, uh, that is no contraction. If the patient attempts to do the movement and if there is some contraction seen in the anterolateral aspect, uh, lateral aspect of the leg, then that is called muzzle power 1. Now to check muzzle power 2. Yes, now ask the patient, this is eliminated of gravity position, parallel to the ground, horizontal. So this is eliminated gravity position. Now ask the patient to do uh, dorsiflexion. Yes, do. Yes, this is full range of motion done in horizontal position. This is um, gravity eliminated position for muzzle power 2. So for muzzle power 3, put it down. Now this is gravity against gravity position. So ask the patient to do the full range of motion. Yes, do. So this is against gravity position perpendicular to the ground and if the patient is able to do it in full range, we call it as muscle power 3. Now for the same movement, if we offer minimal resistance and the patient is asked to do the movement. Yes, do. And if he is able to do the full range with minimal resistance, then we call it as muscle power 4. If maximum uh, uh, resistance is offered and the patient is asked to move. Yes. And if he is able to do the movement, then this is called muzzle power 5. This is for dorsiflexion. Same way for plantar flexion. So plantar flexion is movement is towards, okay, uh, downwards. This is plantar flexion. Yes, this is plantar flexion. So for plantar flexion, so uh, the area to be observed is the posterior aspect or the calf region, posterior aspect of the leg. 
So when the patient is asked to do the plantar flexion, and if he is not able to do the plantar flexion, then that will be muscle pass zero or no contraction. If the patient attempts to plantar flex, but there can be visible contraction seen in the um, calf region, then that can be called muscle power 1 or flicker of contraction. For uh, gravity, eliminated position, ask the patient to put one leg on the other, now do plantar flexion. Yes, this is in eliminated gravity position, horizontal to the ground, parallel to the ground, muscle power 2 in full range. Now patient asked to lie in prone lying, do plantar flexion. Yes, this is plantar flexion in full range done against gravity. So this is uh, uh, muscle power 3. So in the same movement, if minimal resistance is offered, now the patient is asked to do the movement. Yes, do. Yes, if he is able to do the movement in full range with minimal resistance, this is called muscle power 4. And if the patient is asked to do the full uh, range of motion with maximal resistance, yes, do. Yes, this is called muscle power 5. This is for plantar flexion and dorsiflexion. Inversion and eversion. So, inversion, eversion are uh, uh, movements, subtle movements that happen in the foot of that particular muscle. So, when we straighten the knee, uh, kindly do inversion, inversion, yes. This is called inversion, do the eversion, yes, this is called eversion. So, eversion is outward deviation, inversion is inward deviation of the foot. So, this is uh, not a very gross movement that happens in the foot, but it can be very uh, minutely or carefully seen to check for the grades of this particular muscle. So, for uh, muscle power uh, 0, if the patient is asked to do inversion and he is not able to do the movement, then the muscle power is 0 and no contraction. If the patient is trying to do the inversion and if there is some movement in the medial aspect of the leg, then that is called as um, flicker of contraction or muscle power 1. If the patient is uh, lied, made to lie down in supine position and he is made to do the uh, inversion, if he is able to do, so the movement happens in this phase, horizontal to the ground, parallel to the ground, in gravity eliminated position. This is muscle power 2 which is full range of motion happening in the uh, gravity eliminated position. If the patient is asked, this is sideways, uh, side lying, if the patient is asked to do inversion, yes. Yes, this is full range of motion, inversion happening against gravity perpendicular to the ground. For the same movement, if mild resistance is added and uh, the patient is asked to do the movement, yes. And if he is able to do it in full range, this is muscle power 4 with minimal resistance against gravity. If maximum resistance is offered and the patient is asked to do, do the movement, yes. And this is muscle power 5. So, full range of motion against gravity with maximal resistance. So, this is with regarding to inversion. The same way with eversion, uh, supine lying, eversion. So, eversion is a movement that can be seen on the lateral aspect of the leg, okay, lateral aspect of the leg. So, patient when asked to move, do the eversion and the patient is not able to do the movement, then that is called muscle pass zero, so, or uh, no contraction. If the patient attempts to do the, uh, uh, the deviation or attempts to evert, but uh, we can see visible contraction in the lateral aspect of the leg. That is called flicker of contraction, muscle power 1. If the patient is able to do, in supine lying position, if the patient is do, able to do the eversion, eversion, yes. If he is able to do the eversion in uh, supine lying position, this is the plane of movement. So, this happens horizontal to the ground, eliminated gravity position. So, this is muscle power 2. So, for muscle power 3, the patient is asked to evert the muscle. So, do the eversion. So, if he is able to do eversion, yes. If he is able to do the eversion, this is against gravity, perpendicular to the ground. This is called muscle power 3. So, if a mild resistance is offered and the patient is asked to do the movement, yes. Evert, evert, yes. Yes. If a mild resistance is offered and the patient is able to do the movement, is able to do the movement, this is called muscle power 4. So, with minimal resistance and uh, against gravity, uh, full range of motion. If maximum resistance is offered and uh, ask the patient to do the movement, yes, do the movement. And if he is able to do the eversion, this is called muscle power 5. So, our full range of motion against gravity with maximal resistance. So, overall in this session, we have covered the manual muscle testing for the lower limb. So, there are four important movements that happens in and around the hip joint, hip flexion, extension, abduction and adduction knee flexion, extension, 
and in the foot, uh, dorsiflexion, plantar flexion, inversion and eversion. We have just summarized or uh, we have seen the positions as to which uh, position has to be adopted to check for the different uh, five grades of manual muscle testing. Hope this is, uh, I find this uh, uh, video interesting for you people to study. Thank you.